Rockport, Texas, a beautiful small big city located off the South Texas coast, bordered by the Capano Bay and Aransas Bay. It's a paradise for the outdoors enthusiasts. You can enjoy fishing, camping, nature trails, kayaking trails, beaches, bird watching, and great seafood. I packed up all my gear and tackle to visit this mecca off the Texas coast, and I personally want to see what Rockport is all about and bring that experience to you. Welcome to Rockport, Texas. Good morning guys, we have arrived at our first launch spot. You know, honestly, it's really, probably it's impossible to really fish every single location Rockport has to offer unless you're here for at least a good two or three weeks. I've selected a couple of launch spots that hopefully will give us a general idea of what Rockport has to offer when it comes to inshore kayak fishing. So I'm really, really looking forward to it. Hopefully we'll be able to tie in some fish, but look how beautiful the bay is. And check it out over there, look at that sunrise. It is a good time to be alive and to explore Rockport, Texas. So without further ado, let's get our kayak loaded and let's get on the water. This is a public kayak launch. This is uh, near Port Bay. Port Bay is sandwiched in between Capana Bay and Rockport itself. So uh, yeah, this is a, a public kayak launch. I mean, it's hard sand, easy launch right off the beach and get going. All right guys, I am super excited to be out here. Despite it being windy, you know what? We're still going to take advantage and see if we can explore this mecca of fishing on the South Texas coast. One thing I did notice when I was coming into Rockport is it is really a small, big city, if that makes any sense. I mean, it's population is, I mean, it's small compared to Houston, right? But for a city that's near the, um, near the bay and unfortunately gets a lot of hurricane um, damage throughout its history it's still a thriving little city beautiful too yeah so the game plan is to try to escape these winds i'm gonna look for a shoreline that's uh, protected against these winds so i can at least try to side cast hopefully there's a lot of grass flats according to that gentleman i just talked to so that's pretty exciting man that's one good thing about these coastlines on the south texas coast is there's a lot of grass flats where we don't really see that many grass flats on the upper Texas coast. It's just mud and oyster. But down here, it's a good mix of uh, grass flats, oysters, not as much as upper coast, um, and some mud flats. So i uh, really excited. So I'm just going to make a mile pedal to my destination. All right, ladies and gents, after really careful, carefully evaluating the swells in this open bay, because I have to cross about a mile and a half of open bay, I don't think, I think I'm gonna change plans, go to plan B. Um, so I'm gonna kind of fish near the kayak launch instead of crossing this, uh, this bay, because I know the winds are gonna get worse, and right now it's about a foot and a half of swells. So uh, just to be safe, I think I'm gonna stay, like I said, near the kayak launch, just fish the area. But uh, still, I'm gonna take in the beauty, man. Really excited to be here. All right, we're gonna stay close to the grass line here. We're gonna start off early in the morning with a top water. Top water is usually the best thing to use here in this area, just because of the grass flats and how much grass and free floating grass there is. So having a top water idea, well, I don't mind it. <laughs> right now, it's super, super shallow. It says a foot and a half on my hummingbird but it's probably a little bit less than that I can't even engage my pedal drive all the way I'm having a flutter it's all good as long as we find the fish I'm gonna work near these grass patches here as well as grass line I feel like that's gonna be my best bet to see if I can get a predatory fish to hook on yep there is a lot of grass here guys 
Even my top water is getting tangled up with all this grass. There, there was something that just chased it. Probably a small little trout. There could have been a little mullet. Yeah, I'm not really seeing much bait. I uh, only saw a handful. Not as much as I really want to see, so that's... That's not really good. <laughs> uh, it's all good though. We're going to keep searching and we're going to try our best to locate them on this structure right here all the way down as far as we can. Hopefully we'll run into a blow up on this grass line. Basically what we're doing is since we never fish this area, we're just using our sights and sounds and just uh, blind casting and really working this grass line because that's going to be my best bet because I'm not quite sure exactly what else is out there in the middle of the bay except uh, high swells and boats. <laughs> Nothing hitting the trout thumper, so let's go and change it out. I'm going to use something micro. I wanted to really catch something on top water, but unfortunately, as you can see, the water chop is just too much, and in my opinion, too much water chop and doing a top water doesn't really make any sense. So I'm going to tie on a, uh, let's say, a hot head and just flick it along this grass line here. Hopefully, that'll trigger a bite. Do a new penny. I think this is going to work pretty good. I think it has good dark contrast for this murky water. Let's see if we can put some pro cure on it and then uh, get it on its way. See if we can get some shrimp, uh, fish on it. It's starting to smell fishy here. Hopefully this is where all the bait's at. There we go. There is a fish. He's going to be a smaller guy. I think it's a smaller red, if I'm not mistaken. But first fish today, first Rockport fish. And I am pretty ecstatic about it. <laughs> yeah, small little redfish, but I'll take them on a hothead. It's been pretty slow, uh, even though it's still early in the morning. Come on, buddy. Oh, look at that pretty fish right there, guys. First Rockport red on the hothead. Had to microsize early in the morning. It's not even 8 o'clock yet. And he finally thumped it. Thank you, my man. I appreciate it. <laughs> this right here is the Bugs Fishing Lure, the Hothead, New Penny is the color. I believe this is the one 8 size. In order to throw this, you need a ultralight stuff. There we go. There you go, my man. Thank you so much. You keep on croaking and get that bait. Beautiful. There we go. There's a small fish. Another small fish. Another small red. Thinking, yep. Another small red fish. They're loving this little hothead shrimp. <laughs> I'll take it anyways. Don't want to lose my lure here. Here you go, buddy. Thank you, my man. Well, they're not giants. <laughs> but still, nonetheless, I'm having a good time out here. Let's go and power pole down so we don't lose our spot here. Check out that beautiful, beautiful small little dude. Lots of ambition. He's going to grow up to be a big guy because he's attacking that shrimp and getting his, his grub on once again on the hothead. Thank you, my man. I appreciate it. You're beautiful. Woo. All right, ladies and gents, a little bit of an update. Uh, it is 9 a.m. right now. I've been fishing about two hours. Went down about two miles down the shoreline, just tossing uh, different lures. Only was able to hook up with two small redfish. Didn't see no blow-ups. Uh, haven't really seen any bait except that little small cut into the drain. Um, there was a little bit of bait there, but other than that, yeah, it's been it's been pretty dead. I'm not sure if it has to do with the tide movement because there's not really much of a tide movement according to the tide charts. I mean, that could be the case and the water is a little bit murky and uh, visibility is not that good because of the high winds. 
But anyways, what I'm going to do is I'm going to head back down towards the kayak launch and kind of work my way over there. I, I saw there's more grass flats there compared to all the way down here. So that's what I'm going to do and see if we can eke out a couple of keepers and then uh, call it a day uh, for the uh, first part of the fishing. There we go. There's a, what is this? A ladyfish. <laughs> nice, nice big ladyfish. Oh my gosh. Man, they fight. These ladyfish, you know, they're considered not game fish, but uh, still so much fun to catch. All right, hold on, hold on. I'll get you off. <laughs> oh, I'll take it, man. It's been a slow day. I will take one of these things right here. Ooh, that's a big ladyfish. Goodness gracious, it's got to be about at least 20 inches. All right, my man. Thank you for nailing that paddle tail, the Guggen Baits. Look at that beautiful specimen. Big old ladyfish. Be good cut bait for sure. Big bull red. There you go. There we go. That's a small little. Gosh, man, it's a bunch of ladyfish here. That's what blew up that bait earlier. All right, little man. There you go. Thank you, man. You have been good cut bait. <laughs> so what is the way to fish this bay? Is it like what you're doing is drifting? Is that the best way with a suspending bait? We fish it in the winter. More than, I don't come now, but once every two weeks. Okay. So you, you said this, this bay is better for winter, though, you said. Yeah, we catch, we probably catch a lot more in the winter than what we do this time of year. Okay, gosh, I picked the wrong place to come visit then. <laughs> well, I'm giving you some information for uh, future purposes. Yeah. Um, oh, there we go. Oh, oh, nice spec. <laughs> there, there we go. Out. Nice. It was a slow day, huh, for you? Yeah. You, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you just never know. never know. I think the tide movement was uh, almost non-existent, really small. Yeah, there's four tides today and there's very, very little change. Yeah, exactly. So I think uh, that's probably has to do a lot with it, I'm thinking. Yeah. Exactly. And the dirty water from the winds. Yeah. So it doesn't surprise me that it's four down. You got to take those as well as the good ones. Yeah, you got to. I believe you. Yeah, it was a pleasure meeting you. Yeah. Hopefully I'll run into you in the future. Yeah. Whew. Well, ladies and gents, I'm going to call it quits. It's uh, almost noon. Been grinding it out for about oh, almost six hours. It was hard fishing, man, no doubt. Um, my friend George I met, he's been fishing for a long time. He said he only caught two ladyfish and two really small trout. So I don't feel too, too bad. But I had a great time. It's a beautiful, beautiful bay. I just wish I knew uh, that this bay was not a really good spot to fish during the summertime. This is a good bay, according to George, a good fish, a good bay to fish during the wintertime. But anyways, I'm going to pack it in and then I am going to show you some cool things about Rockport. So stay tuned because there's more than fishing when it comes to Rockport and when you come to visit your, with your family or by yourself, just let me show you some of the attractions they have. So here's some interesting factoids about the city of Rockport. It was actually founded in 1867 and it has a lot of Texas history off the Texas coast. Um, however, it has seen its fair share of hurricane damage most recently 2017 with Hurricane Harvey. Uh, it caused a lot of damage, but the city of Rockport and the community is very strong and they built it up really strong today in 2020. Tourism is their main economic backbone. So with that in mind, I actually wanna show you two or three cool tourism spots. So if you ever come down to fish or you come down with your family, you had a day of fishing like me when the fishing was actually slow, there's more to fishing than meets the eye at Rockport. So you guys stay tuned. Let's go look at those cool spots. All right, guys. This is this is Rockport Beach Park, a very very family friendly. It's actually a real beach uh, where you can fish, you can swim, bring your family out. It's pretty cool. Uh, check out some of the B-roll that I've uh, filmed, and I'm gonna walk down the beach and hopefully capture the essence of Rockport Beach Park and what it's all about.
right, folks, there you have it. The beach is a very, very busy place, a public place. So uh, if you decide to come, make sure you practice six feet of social distancing. But anyways, uh, yeah, it gets really crowded on the weekend, but uh, I'm gonna show you another spot that's actually pretty chill, and it's somewhere that you actually need to visit when you come to Rockport. Okay, ladies and gents, we are at our last stop, a tourism stop for the city of Rockport, and this is called the Big Tree. The Big Tree is a, obviously it's a big oak tree that's over, well over a thousand years old, one of the oldest trees in the world in existence today. And um, it's very majestic, very, very cool. It's seen its fair share of hurricanes in the past thousand years. But uh, yeah, this is one of the spots that you guys want to check out, especially if you're bringing a family. Uh, very, very cool. A lot of history behind this area right here. Okay, ladies and gents, that's going to conclude our episode of Texas Fishing Travels, the Rockport, Texas edition. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you do visit Rockport, make sure you check out the beach. Make, your, make sure you check out the big tree right here. Also, take advantage of some fishing. There's so many fishing spots in Rockport, Texas. Unfortunately, we didn't have enough time. We only had enough time for one spot. But trust me, there's tons of fishing spots because this is a fishing community. And I really, really enjoy my time here to just embrace the beauty and the nature and just everything about the Rockport, uh, Texas Aurora, I guess. It's, it's, it's really cool. I encourage you guys to do it. But if you like this video, guys, make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you comment, leave some comments. If you take the time to comment, I really do appreciate it. And that's going to be it. And I'll catch you guys on the next one.